One day, Buddha was walking alone around the edge of a lotus pond in paradise. The white lotus flowers blooming in the pond were as white as jewels. And from the golden pistils in their centers, an indescribably pleasant fragrance was continuously spilling out into the surroundings. Paradise must have been in the early morning. Eventually, Buddha stopped at the edge of the pond and threw the lotus leaves covering the surface of the water. He happened to look down at what was below, as the bottom of the pond in paradise corresponded exactly to the bottom of hell. He could clearly see the sights of the river Sanzu and the mountain of needles, as if looking through a magnifying glass, through the crystal clear water. Then Buddha noticed a man wriggling with other sinners at the bottom of hell. The man was named Kandeda, and while he had committed numerous evil deeds, such as murder and arson, he had one good memory. That is, once when he was passing through a deep forest, he saw a small spider crawling along the roadside. Kandeda immediately lifted his foot to crush it, but he thought, no, no, even this small creature has a life. It's not right to arbitrarily take its life. It's too pitiful. And at the last moment, he changed his mind and spared the spider's life. As he looked at the scene in hell, Buddha remembered that Kandeda had saved the spider. So, thinking he should save this man from hell as a reward for his single act of kindness if possible, Buddha looked around. Fortunately, a spider from paradise was spinning a beautiful silver thread on a leaf that was as green as jade nearby. Buddha gently took the spider's thread and lowered it straight down to the bottom of hell. Far below, through the white lotus flowers. On the other hand, Kandeda was floating and sinking in the blood. Pond at the bottom of hell along with other sinners. Everywhere he looked was pitch black, and when something faintly floated up from that darkness, what was it but the terrifying needles of the mountain of needles shining? He was so desolate. On top of that, the surroundings were as quiet as a tomb, and all he could hear were the faint sighs of the sinners. It seems that humans who have fallen to the extent of coming here are exhausted from the various punishments of hell and no longer have the strength to cry out. So, even Candida, a notorious criminal, was writhing in the blood of the blood pond, choking and gasping for breath, just like a dying frog. But then something happened. Candida casually raised his head and looked up at the sky of the blood pond. And from far, far above, a silver spider's thread was gently falling down towards him, shining faintly in a single thin line, as if afraid to catch the human eye. When Candida saw this, he instinctively clapped his hands in delight. If he could climb this thread all the way to the top, he would surely be able to escape from hell. No, if things went well, he might even be able to enter paradise. Then, he would no longer have to be chased up the mountain of needles nor would he have to be submerged in the blood pond. Thinking this, Candida immediately grabbed the spider's thread with both hands and began to climb up and up with all his might. After all, being a notorious criminal, he was quite used to this kind of thing. However, the distance between hell and paradise is tens of thousands of miles, so no matter how impatient he was, he couldn't easily get out. After climbing for a while, Candida finally became exhausted and could no longer climb any higher. So, he had no choice but to rest for a while, hanging in the middle of the thread and looking down far below. Then, all the hard work he had done to climb up paid off, and the blood pond where he had been just a while ago, was now hidden in the bottom of the darkness. Also, the terrifying needles of the mountain of needles, had become below his feet. If he could continue to climb at this rate, it might not be impossible to escape from hell. As Candida wrapped his hands around the spider's thread, he laughed in a voice he hadn't used for many years since he came here, saying, I've done it. I've done it. But when he realized it, there were countless sinners following him up. The spider's thread from the dark bottom of the blood pond, just like an ant's procession, climbing up and up with all their might. Candida was so surprised and scared that for a while, he just opened his big mouth like a fool and moved only his eyes. How could this thin spider's thread which seemed about to break even with just him, possibly withstand the weight of so many people. If, by any chance it were to break in the middle, he, who had gone to great lengths to climb up here, would have to fall back into hell. That would be terrible, but even so, the sinners kept crawling up from the dark bottom of the blood pond, hundreds and thousands of them, and climbed up. The thin, shining spider's thread, one after another, diligently. So, Candida shouted in a loud voice, Hey, you sinners! This spider's thread is mine! Who asked you to climb up? Get down! Get down! The moment he did that, 
The spider's thread, which had been fine until then, suddenly snapped from where Candida was hanging. So, Candida couldn't stand it. In the blink of an eye, he fell straight down into the darkness, spinning like a top, and before he knew it, he had fallen head first back into hell. Afterwards, only the spider's thread from paradise was left, dangling short in the middle of the sky, where there were no moon or stars, shining thin and bright. Buddha had been standing at the edge of the lotus pond in paradise, watching this whole thing, and when Candida sank to the bottom of the blood pond like a stone, he began to walk again, looking sad. The heartlessness of Candida, who tried to escape from hell by himself, and the punishment he deserved. For that, must have seemed pitiful to Buddha. However, the lotus flowers in the lotus pond of paradise, didn't care about such things at all. The white flowers, like jewels, were swaying their calyxes around. Buddha's feet, and from the golden pistols in their centers, an indescribably pleasant fragrance was continuously spilling out into the surroundings. It must have been nearing noon in paradise.